always searching for a family until we found each other. I'm gonna ask you how well you know your cast and your director. Okay, okay. okay. This person was a cast member of the sketch series, The Kevin Bishop Show, where she played characters including Angelina Jolie, Katy Perry, Mary Poppins, and more. What the f <laughs> What? Karen? Karen Gillan. Did you do that? It was me. Oh my God. That sounds fun. Yeah, do you wanna know what I did for Angelina Jolie? Yeah, what? <laughs> Just did that with my lips and didn't change anything else. <laughs> I am gonna make you watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith with me again! Played guitar in the nude as Che in season four of The O.C. Oh my gosh. Uh, what? Well, it had to, it, it, it was, oh no, wait. Of The O.C. Of The O.C. Chris Pratt? Pratt? That sounds like Chris Pratt. I'm looking at, it's not Dave. It, is it, is it you? Wait right there. I have a gift for you. Interesting fact about that scene, uh, I do this with this finger while playing the guitar because I had severed some tendons in my hand and I couldn't bend my left finger for three years of my life. There you go, Easter egg. Polar bears die. Two, three, four, goodbye. That's a good OC fact. Yeah. For your OC podcast. You yeah, know, I've got, I've got, to, I go through episodes yeah. I actually do about 10 minutes of every episode once a week. Yeah. And it's going to last for 40, 45 years. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's OC, OCD. And it's about <laughs> his his compulsion with the show, oh, the with OC. the show, the OC. Which and all things Orange County. I've never seen, but I do like the theme song. On that topic of being uncensored, got to say the first uncensored F word in an MCU film. Uh, was other cast members jealous of this? Uh, yeah, Downey uh, emailed me and said um, that he was really pissed off that. Is that true? No. Oh, dang it. Um, yeah, it's I should have uh, known that wasn't true, because Downey would never email you. No, he does email me, no, actually. No, he doesn't. He does. I see something made up. Oh, that's so not true. I'll no. show you my emails right now. That's all right. That's okay. You want to see him? I trust that you, I trust that I'm, my instincts are correct. Email buddies. He, you probably created a Robert Downey Jr. email to email yourself from him just in case it ever came up. Still an email from Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't. Where anyone? Everyone's. Everyone. You know, we get. We like all start poking fun at the end of these uh, runs, of these comedic pieces where we start improvising lines and trying to one-up one another and there have been a multitude of me dropping f-bombs I th through the course of the three films this is certainly the last two and uh, I'm really grateful that that one that one uh, got in and I didn't understand the historic re relevance uh, in yeah, well, until <laughs> recently but I got to be at the receiving end of the first f-bomb which is also pretty cool yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I always want to say bad words, but, you know, I'm really happy he got to do it, you know? Yeah, it should go to We're Starbucks. proud of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we do that a lot and it just doesn't make the cut, obviously. Mm -hmm. We're sometimes, like, when we're so angry in scenes, we just, like, lose control a little bit and it comes out, right? Because James really pushes us. He likes it when we really scream and, like, mm -hmm. lose it. And, and then, obviously, things can slip out. We had it in the movie and it was really funny. And I showed it to Kevin for the first time. And he watched the movie, and uh, he, we were talking about it, he was really happy, and I said, you know, and, you know, got the F word in there. And he goes, yeah. And I said, are we good? And he said, well, you know, I mean, listen, the Russo brothers had an F-bomb in, 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 uh, in the end of Endgame, where like, I, don't, I can't remember what it was, but something like uh, Robert put on the thing, and he said, you know, go, you know, F yourself or something like that. I can't remember, something like that. And it really went over well. The crowd, like, applauded. They loved it. But the Russos said that they, you know, didn't want that to be their legacy. And Kevin said, so, you know, I mean, if you want it to be your legacy, then... And I looked at him and I said, who the f*** do you think you're talking to? <laughs> of course I want it to be my legacy. 
<laughs> and then we put it in the movie. Yeah. So that was the end of that. But honestly, I'll, that was the only discussion we ever had about it, other than every time we had a screening, people laughed like crazy. So it was it was going to stay in there from Marvel's point of view. I was afraid it, when the heads of Disney saw it that they might say something, but they never did. So, you know, I think maybe Bob Iger was texting through that scene or something. Now what? Open the f- door. That is a stupid design. And your instructions were very unclear. This person was originally slated to play Pennywise in It. What? Hey. Slated to play Pennywise? I, I, you might be thinking of Palm. I know she auditioned for it. Her like, audition for Pennywise was the greatest thing ever. It was so creepy and cool. She auditioned for Pennywise. She sent me the tape. I, you know, and it was amazing. Her audition for Pennywise was awesome. Was but. it Will Poulter? Sean? <laughs> you! You! What happened? Yeah, I. <laughs> What happened? I, I was at like a scheduled thing. It was very boring. There's no like fun story. Man. Yeah. He would have made a great Pennywise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can really see that. Amazing brow game too. Amazing what? Brow game. Oh, he's got. Mm -hmm. Oh, has he got strong brows? Yeah, like cool brows. Oh. Oh yeah, you're right. No, it's like expressive. I've it's got interesting. I've a very bad memory. Is what I'm learning. <laughs> Who are these people? Uh, yeah, what is going on with me? <laughs> Sorry. But that would have been a very prosthetics heavy role, makeup heavy role. You didn't need it, man. That's not true. <laughs> you knew That's you were going to do this a few years yeah. later. There you go. Yeah, you well, it's sort of segueing a bit. You both had very heavy, in different ways, makeup and prosthetics. How did that affect just from a performance standpoint, just going through that process every day? And it relaxed. I, I love having uh, stuff done to my face, basically. So that was a, I would catch a, like uh, 75, 80 minutes sleep in the chair while they did that. In fact, I'd catch more than that because I'd spend the first half hour in the hair, hair and makeup, Cassie Rusek and the team, mm. and then I, and lovely uh, um, Tommy Dudley would do my hair. Then I would move over there and get another hour and 15 minutes nap while they did my makeup. And what was great about the prosthetics, it was, it was actually not restrictive at all. It was one of those things where I got the benefit of looking so incredibly striking, but at the same time I could act. I could use my face, use my face muscles and stuff. Mm. So I, I was lucky they went with that decision as opposed to how he traditionally appears in the comic book. Approach it, I've always loved people fussing around my head. Face and head, I cannot stand it. <laughs> That's so funny. It definitely helps me. It makes me feel like her. I literally get to wear the character's skin. You know, we always want that metaphorically, but I get to literally do that and it makes me feel different and more villainy, even though I'm not a villain anymore, but it makes me like more understated as well because I physically can't move too much. Yeah, yeah, I mean it, it makes you more still in some way, which is yeah, so there's a weight. great for the character. Mm -hmm. The antennas are like so small, you know, it's just a little prosthetic on top of my forehead, so I can like forget about the makeup, you know? So yeah, I just become weird because <laughs> that's what I do. Hello! You're right. You probably know Karen appeared as Amy Pond in three seasons of Doctor Who, but another Guardians cast member appeared in two episodes as Carl in Doctor Who. Uh, Will Poulter. Of Doctor Who? What? Who's that? Is it Chuck? It is you. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> I was like, am I going crazy? You would have got that, no? Yeah, yeah. You would have said it. <laughs> Chuck Woody <Uchi. laughs> I was a Secret Service agent. I was protecting President Nixon. It was a time travel one. Oh, yeah. Um, I was awful, though. You were able to draw from your real life a lot on that Yeah, one, yeah, no, I, I, was, I was just bad. Yeah. I was just bad. <laughs> it's just not good, isn't it? At all. <laughs> That's Karen not. Was great. I do not believe that for a second. <laughs> He's a Secret Service agent. Oh, you asked oh. him if you could use the bathroom. I asked him? Yeah. Wait, did you already play with him and you didn't what? know? What? I keep on forgetting because he's so different as the high evolutionary. Yeah. He's... Yeah, no, we did talk about it. Excuse me, is there a toilet or something? Sorry, ma'am. While this procedure is ongoing, you must remain within the Oval Office. Their first <laughs> acting credit was as found a peanut father in Tromeo and Juliet. Oh, uh, must be James. Sean Gunn. What a great character name, by the That's way. That's a James Gunn movie, so it's someone who's worked with you. It must be uh, um, uh, um, 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 Nathan? Rooker. No, no, no. Michael, is it Michael Rooker? Well, it's gotta be Sean, I suppose, if he's an actor in Tromeo and Juliet or James. 
Found the peanut, found the peanut just now. Obviously, music is such a big part of these movies. I'm very curious if on set, any of those music moments, are they playing any of those songs on set or are those coming as surprise to you as needle drops when you get to see it? No, James very much likes to kind of play the music that he's gonna fit to the picture, you know, actual songs from the soundtrack in the moment. And, uh, you know, that, that really can help add a, a real sort of gravitas, you know, an extra kind of emotional motivation to a scene. And um, sometimes that's how he writes, cool. he writes yeah. with the music. So yeah. it kind of makes sense that he wants to direct with that. It really, I, I loved it every time he would do that. It really, it really drops you into certain moments. It also tells you, it gives you hints because we've all seen movies, right? We all watch them. Mm. We all know how soundtrack works with acting. We all know that if you didn't have the soundtrack of Ennio Marconi and, and people are standing for ages to draw their song, it's not as strong. Does that make sense? Yeah. So to have James sort of like play this piece of music and say, oh, by the way, this is going to be in slow motion. You see it in your head and you suddenly, you hold yourself slightly different. You know yeah. how you should turn your head because you've seen that before. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful to have that on set, you know? It's the slow motion walking yeah, scene. Yeah, that was really cool to because- the Beastie Boys. Yeah. And we were like walking with the new costumes too. Yeah, we were in our Guardians costume, if, just walking, slow motion, yeah. just knowing we look cool right now. <laughs> like, you know they're gonna do slow motion in post, but yeah. are, do you feel that urge to like try and do it a little bit or have you practiced that out? No, because actually if you, ga if you gather some momentum, it looks kind of better when it's slowed down, right? Because everything kind of moves. I mean, Ooh, I don't yeah. have any hair as Nebula, but <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, d I don't remember like the little tricks, maybe not close the eyes too much because otherwise it looks like it's like oh, slow you motion, know. like, <laughs> yeah. you know? There's multiple ways to work slow motion. They worked with real wolves in their first leading role in the 2009 film, Loop. Real wolves? Oh, Pom, this is French, right? You, the French gave it away. She uh, worked with real, of course, of course Pom of worked course with real Palm wolves. Worked with real wolves. She's <laughs> too cool for that to not make sense. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Pom Clementiev, yes. I know about this film, actually, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. me. <laughs> you worked with real wolves? Yeah, of course. I did a movie in Oriental Siberia. Wow. I was playing a nomad and I had to ride reindeers. Wow. And it was like below like 55 degrees Celsius. <gasps> It was like super cold. So a nice way to and start. Your yeah, career. it was beautiful, and I like rode horses, and it was beautiful. Wow! I learned how to uh, drive a sled with reindeers too. Oh, <gasps> got so many skills. <laughs> when I was thinking about that role and, and those wolves, obviously animals played a big part in this film. I was thinking of my cat the whole time that I was watching Guardians. Were you thinking about the animals in your lives, the pets in your lives, when you got 100%. to watch the movie? I kept thinking about my dog, Turtle. And then immediately afterwards, I was like, I have to go home to see Turtle and just make sure that she's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up with dogs, cats, uh, birds, and I, 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 I love animals. Okay. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's what your family was just very big and... Oh, yeah. I grew animals. up in the countryside in France, so yeah, lots of animals. Wow. And like like puppies and whatever. Like oh, my the, God, puppies. You know, so cute. We love I would like lie down in the garden and we like have all the puppies that come really? on my face and like, yeah. Oh my God. What an incredible image. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, it's like cuddling the puppies. That's so wonderful. <laughs> so amazing. I didn't think about it really when I was filming it, but when I saw it for the first time, when I saw, in fact, it's when I saw the trailer for the first time and the very first teaser actually goes right into Baby Rocket's eyes. And they're this, uh, for me, I, and my, my wife said the same, my brother said the same thing. Oh. They're my dog's eyes, they're Cicero's eyes. It really affected me when oh, I sure. saw, saw it then. That was a, that's when it started affecting me, when I saw the finished product. Thank goodness yeah. it was then and not while, oh, while I was set. filming. That would have yeah. Yeah, yeah. taken you out of it. Yeah. 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 An interesting fact about, you know, my dog, uh, Wesley, passed away a couple years ago. He was the you know, greatest pet I've ever had. Wesley was part of the model for Rocket and for Group. Um, his eyes were like something that we talked about, but also he's got a little snaggle tooth that Rocket has, and we actually uh, shot that and used that as part of uh, Rocket's mouth is based on Wesley's mouth. I did it because I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs>